This is the Christmas Movie Screenwriter Podcast, episode number 12. Hello, and welcome to the Christmas Movie Screenwriter Podcast. I'm your host, Karen McCann. The Christmas Movie Screenwriter is a podcast about writing, producing, and selling Christmas movies. I publish a transcript with every episode in case you want to look at something or read it later. Just go to the website at www.christmasmoviescreenwriter.com and look for this episode, which is number 12. A quick few, few words about what I'm working on. I finished my latest Christmas script and it's out to readers. The plan is to start contacting producers by March 1st. I also started my next script, which is a little outside my wheelhouse. It's a faith-based story, but told from a secular point of view. I can't say too much about it yet, but what I like about it is the thesis is very controversial, which I hope will get people talking. My guest today is screenwriter Brian Ruberry. He has a very inspirational story. You'll learn that he wrote off and on for 40 years until he got a sale. Now that is persistence. Now he can sell scripts just based on a one to two page synopsis. So he is a real success story. He talks about how producers are looking beyond stories with typical Christmas tropes, opportunities in TV movies versus feature films, the value or lack of value of script competitions, and how to connect with producers. Here is the main segment. Today's guest is screenwriter Brian Ruberry. Brian is an award-winning screenwriter, playwright, short story writer, and script consultant. He has an MFA in writing for the screen from Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles. He sold five TV movies in three years, including Merry Magic Christmas, airing December 17th on Lifetime. As a script consultant, he works with aspiring screenwriters to provide feedback and in-depth analysis for the screenplays and offer strategies on how to connect with producers. So, Brian, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. It's great to be here. I've heard some some of your some of your other some of the other podcasts and I and I love them. Oh, um, thank you. Thank yeah, you. Very, very, very nice. Yes. Oh, thank you. Well, I'm 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 contemplating doing this right now it's a bi-weekly or uh, sorry it's every yeah every every month two podcasts a month but now I'm thinking of going to four because there's a, a lot of um, interest and uh get and I love talking to producers and writers and I, I want and eventually I'm going to have some sales agents and distributors on the on the call so oh. yeah yeah very I'll be, uh, I'll be tuning in then yay <laughs> Well, Brian, I I told the audience a little bit about yourself, but why don't you take a minute and tell us about yourself and your work? Yeah, so um, I'm a screenwriter. I wasn't produced till rather um, late in life, you you, you might say. Um, As you noted in my bio, I I did go to film school at Loyola Marymount. But that pretty much was the start of what I called my 40 years in the desert. (laughs) (laughs) 40 years. Um, 40 40 years, yeah. So, um, you know, it wasn't like I was writing every day for 40 years. I was writing off and I was was, was writing off and on. But um, I should probably start by, by saying, you know, hearing some of the guests and hearing other writers say, oh, I, I always wanted to be a writer or, you know, I, I, I wrote stories in high school and grade school. I'm probably the most unlikeliest writer that you will ever, ever, ever interview. I mean, okay. in, 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 in high school, I had two interests, well, maybe three interests, but, um, you know, but my, my top one was sports and playing football. And I didn't, you know, I didn't have any interest in writing. Um, and, uh, but then, um, you know what they say is one door closes and another door opens. And, in, and, right. um, in college, I had a pretty bad shoulder injury and I stopped playing and just kind of on a whim, I took a short story course and I found out I had a, uh, talent for storytelling and, hmm. uh, had a short story published. But what I really wanted to do was to write movies. 
So yeah. as so um, I did. I went to film. I you know drove cross country. I went went to film school in Los Angeles, and uh, that was all going well. But I ended up moving back to the Washington D.C. area and uh, continued to write, but. But, you know, it was the same old trying to write from the East Coast to, right. you know, to get an agent or to get or to get a, a produced. It was just, you know, it, it was just a lot of doors, a lot of doors closing. So it it really ended up being, you know, 40, 40 years of, wow. of hearing, um, you know, well, you're a good writer, but or, <laughs> you know, you know, thanks. But we decided to go in a different t- direction, you know, basically 40 years of, of just hearing that's a pass. So, um, and then, and then five years ago, I read an article in a screenwriting magazine about writing television movies, including Christmas movies, and just how many of these movies that they, that they make every year. Now, I, I never thought of writing a TV movie or let alone a Christmas movie. But, you know, obviously with over a hundred, at least, you know, well over a hundred just Christmas movies alone being produced every, every year, it seemed like a no brainer. So I contacted the author of that, of that article. And um, she said, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to watch these things. So, I watched a few on Hallmark and Lifetime, and I got it. I mean, you know, it wasn't like, um, hot, you know, the humor was, um, they, they, they weren't like joke jokes. It was more, it was more cute. Right. Um, you know, there's, there's no, there's no bad language. Everybody keeps their clothes on. And um, <laughs> yeah, and so I, I got it. I was like, okay, I, I see what they're doing here. I, I can do this. <laughs> so um I wrote it. I wrote a Christmas script and sent it in to the author of the article. And I was expecting, you know, the same old, you know, we're going in a, in a different direction or something. And lo and behold, she called back about a week later and said, Brian, I think I can sell this. And that started and that that script did get did get option and finally did sell just just this past year, in fact. Um, but um, that's but then. Um, so, you know, I thought I had had it made. She had me, I uh, came out to Los Angeles and I met met with the producers and, um, um, you know, again, a lot of interest in my concepts and scripts and, you know, she, p- 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 producers shopping around scripts. But, you know, another two or three years went by and still no sales. Um, mm. It was, it was, you know, I guess harder than I thought. It was like, gosh, I guess I really haven't cracked this, cracked this, cracked this, cracked this nut. And then, um, um, and then finally, about three years ago, um, I went back to an old, um, I actually did technically sell a script um to uh, but then um and I all and I got all the way to the stage of the first of the first draft and then it came back that literally it was like you know be, because the script had to do with a uh, with 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 a old historic house mm-hmm. and producers came back after all that and said you know and and they, they've taken and they've accepted the the concept they they greenlit the outline um, and then I got to the first draft and like, you know, we think we need to go with a more some something more more contemporary. <laughs> so mm-hmm. we're gonna no put point. a pin in the script. Okay. So oh, too bad. Once yeah, so once again it was like, oh, you know, back back to back to the back to the drawing board. Um and then you know, and then um Finally, um, I had written a script a couple of years ago about a um, a woman that plays a uh, a researcher, a university a, a professor who comes up with a study to match people based on on the physical signs of of attraction, like you mm-hmm. know your it, it measures your beating heart, your dials, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. your right. your 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 pu- pupils. D- I dilate, mm-hmm. but the producer thought that was just way too intellectual about you know it's about a study and it's science and 
So he had me change it and then ended up just being, you know, changing into something about she was now an entrepreneur and and a dog collar, a smart dog collar. And the whole thing just ended up being a total, a total mess. And then one day um, I was watching Netflix and my wife was watching a show called The One about a scientist who match makes people according to their, 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 their DNA. Yeah. And I turned to her and said, you know, I think I wrote something like this a couple, of, a couple of years ago. And I went back to my original concept about the scientists and the study. And I wrote that, um, I polished that into a new, a new concept. And that ended up being my first sale and production called The Attraction Test. Okay, great. Well, that, that answers my first question, you know, your journey breaking into the industry. But let me follow up on something you said. You said uh, you contacted the writer of the script, the script magazine, <clears throat> uh, the writer of an article, and uh, maybe a journalist. And um, she said something like, "I think we can sell it." Was she a producer? No, she was a she was a writer, but she but she had a lot of but she had a lot of contacts. So she was okay. in that capacity, I guess. You know. Uh, a wannabe producer. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, well, it, she, it just takes someone to pitch your projects on your behalf. Right. And she knew a lot. And she knew a lot of people. She she lived in L.A. and um, oh, she knew a good. lot of producers. Uh, she had a partial, uh, she had a co-writing credit, in fact, for a Christmas movie. But, but she knew, she was the first person to kind of introduce me to these producers who I, okay. who I realized that, that the you know the the world of TV movies is kind of a, a small niche niche right. world, right? And you'll see the same just as just as you'll see the same actors um, in these movies, you'll see see the same producers. Um, and so right. that that's really what got the ball ball rolling. Okay, so how do you balance meeting audience expectations while staying fresh and not predictable or cliche? Ooh, that's. Um, that's that's a that's a tough one. Um, you know, um, I I think what I try to do is, um, you know, and it's I try to think of things that I think are are higher concept, um, like the movie, uh, my movie coming out on Lifetime. Uh, later this month, Merry Magic Christmas is about a woman who sees an angel number, a recurring number, and that that number eventually leads her to le- leads her to love. So um, it's you know at times you um, you want to avoid the tropes, but it it turns out that the audience and, and producers want want the tropes in there because okay. they they want something they want something familiar. Right. Um, but I, you know, the Hallmark's most popular Christmas movie last year was um, uh, Three Wise Men and a Baby, which okay. I don't know if you saw that, but I don't mm-hmm. think that had any tropes in it, and it was about okay. three 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 brothers. And uh, now they all, ha- you know, they they all have love interests in the movie, but it's about three brothers. And there's, you know, I I I watched it, enjoyed it, and didn't really see a lot of tropes. So um, um, okay. I'm, you know, I'm thinking that they're starting to look look for new and fresher ideas. Uh, that's great. That that is music to my ears. So after you finish the script and it's ready to go out, what's your next step? How do you move it towards getting into production? Well, with, you know, now, of course, I've, now I'm to the point where I've already, uh, the script's already been, been, uh, been, uh, been a green lit. So I'm, you know, I'm writing under, I'm writing under contract. Um, so I don't have to, you know, I don't have to necessarily sell it. Um, the, the benefit though, of being a produced writer, at least in the TV movie world is um, while you can still write spec scripts, you don't necessarily have to write spec scripts to get produced. Once you have a relationship with the producer, you really only need a one or two page synopsis um, and they will buy that, um, knowing that you can, you know, crank the script out, that 
that you have the skill set to, uh, to, uh, to write the script. So that's the position I'm in, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in now um, of, uh, of, I just have to write, you know, one, a one or two page synopsis and then they buy the concept and then we go to outline and script, et cetera. So are you um, coming up with these concepts yourself or, or are they giving them to you? No, I I come up with the concepts myself, which is which is <laughs> as you know is very is is not easy because there's so many Christmas uh, Christmas movies out there, and you know a, a common refrain that I'll hear, particularly from Hallmark, is oh, "Well, we've we've already done that, we've or done we that. have something we have something like that in development," you know. Right. Right, um, right. So you almost wish that they would put 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 out a list of things, you know, concepts that they have in development. So you're not, you know, just spinning, just spinning your, just spinning your wheels. But um, when I first when I first started out, um, and again, this is one of the great things about uh, writing TV movies as opposed to, uh, you know, more tra- more tra- traditional feature films is. Um, I bought IMDb. I have IMDb Pro, and that right. that has a lot of emails for 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 producers. And so I tell aspiring screenwriters, you know, if you want to write a big action movie or something, you know, if if you have that kind of a script, you could you 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 could email fifty producers and probably not hear back from any. But if you have a Christmas movie for for uh, for a TV, you could e- you could email twenty producers and probably hear hear back from a handful of them. So it, mm-hmm. they're very eager to to new writers. They're very eager eager for n- for new for new concepts, and uh, it's a just a great way to break in. That's well, that is inspiring, and I I need to mention you are inspiring uh, 40 years of persistence so i tip my hat to you <laughs> good, uh, good for you brian now how how would you balance the heartwarming christmas elements with other genres like let's say i mean you're talking about being creative how about a heist or some create creating a unique and appealing story yeah and it's funny you say that because um i was talking to a production company i should say uh talking emailing a, a, a production company a couple of weeks maybe a few weeks ago or so just kind of you know hey so what do you are you what kind are you guys looking for christmas scripts and um and he goes yes but here's the areas that we're we're, we're looking at and he listed like three or four areas military he didn't say heist but i think he's i forget the word he used but it was like um I forget the word he used, but he mentioned specific like categories that you don't normally see these Christmas movies in. And that really got my creative juices going because when, when he said, um, you know, do something like, a, you know, Christmas spy movie or do a, um, uh, what were the ones, Mil- military, you know, that kind of breaks your mind out of that, you know, you know, girl meets boy you know, girl who who's his boy, you know, girl gets 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 boy back, um, that um you tend to see these these movies in. So that's a great way to think about these these now because now they are starting to production companies are now open to to get yeah. away from these sort of standard um uh you know s- storylines. That's great news. That's great news. On this, I'm I'm curious because I actually wrote a, uh, a Christmas spy movie called Christmas Undercover, and I'm just wondering, in your opinion, this is sort of off topic, but in your opinion, are these uh, producers interested in still the light-hearted, whimsical uh, story, or even with a spy element, or do they want maybe a little more of a thrilling thriller element? Yeah, I'm not sure about that one um, because the the concept that he that the producer took was a military <laughs> concept. But uh, even with that one, he said they don't want it. You know, they they did want it fairly lighthearted. Like, okay. So um, I think I had 
maybe one or both of the love interests who had lost um, lost a spouse in the war. And I think I had both. I think I had both of them. And they said, no, let, 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 let's just have one, you know, one, one, one right. lead who's, right. who's, who's, who's lost a spouse. So um, I, I don't know the answer to that question, but I suspect they probably still wanted a bit lighthearted, Joe. Yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. So how would you suggest screenwriters expand their network of producers, for example, networking in film markets, uh, which ones, competitions, or utilizing online platforms? Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, it's, as I said earlier, it's, um, um, you know, one is um, if you're, if you don't have, if you don't have any credits, then um, you need to go beyond just writing a synopsis. You need to show them that you can write, you know, a hundred page script. Um, so you need to have a couple of, let's just say Christmas scripts um, in the right format with nine acts, et cetera, um, uh, ready to, uh, to, uh, to go. And then I would invest in, um, in IMTB pro again and, you know, watch, watch a few new Christmas movies. Don't watch the old ones because they're not using that formula any, anymore. Okay. So to watch okay. some of the, watch some of the new Christmas movies on Hallmark and Lifetime. Right. And, um, and then if you like one, um, go to IMTV Pro. You'll see, you'll see the producers and hope, hopefully you'll find an email or two on there and say, hey, you know, I, I, I have a couple of Christmas scripts. Here's the log line. Don't obviously don't send them the script. Don't send them the synopsis. Just send them the one or two um, line, 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 hog line and, you know, be happy to send it to you if, you know, if, if, you, if, you, if you're interested. Um, you know, you talk about the the script competitions, and I'm kind of on the fence on that. I've done it, mm -hmm. and I even had not a TV movie. I had um uh, another script three two three years ago, place in the semifinal of the Austin Film Festival. Oh. Wow. And they they made a big deal of it, and they said this is you know this is like the top two percent of all the scripts and anyway the bottom line is you know nothing ever happened right, <laughs> i never right. i got a request from again a handful of producers but um i think you need i think people i think to be honest i think a lot of them my my, my wife is english and she uses the term honey spinners <laughs> i think a lot of them <laughs> are just yeah are just ways to make a buck um <laughs> I know there they can be a good way to get feedback because often if, if you you know some uh include notes for free or some if you pay extra then you get notes so they're valuable in that sense but I would say with the one exception I would say would be the would would, would be <laughs> Nichols the um uh you know the the academy's competition I mean if you do anything in that one well then you're going to get noticed but much beyond nickels, I'm I'm not sold yet. Um, but um, I don't know. You never know. Right. So do you attend film markets to pitch your projects? Now, I know, I mean, let's say before you uh, were so established, or do you rely on a representative or a combination of both? Um, I don't have either. I don't, or I should say, I don't do either. I, um, I don't have representation. I did have an agent, but... Um, um, we just didn't see eye to eye on things. And mm -hmm. so I dropped him a couple of, a couple of years ago and just, just, just do it on my own, um, which you can do again, you know, um, which you can do in the TV, in, in the TV movie world. And, um, no, I don't go to, I go, I don't go to conferences. I probably should, <laughs> but, okay. um, but I haven't yet. Yeah. But uh, I heard you talking to one of your guests about it, and I was like, ooh, I should do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you never know. You never know. There is uh, as one of my guests goes to uh, these romance writers con conferences. Uh, not, not, right. she, did, she didn't say the AFM. She didn't say, you know, 
uh, MIPCOM, she said, romance writers conferences because some producers will go there looking for um, movie ideas. But anyway, right. that, uh, one thing you mentioned earlier, you said now you can talk to producers or email producers, just a log line and maybe a synopsis and, and maybe get hired off that. How many scripts produced produced scripts did it take for you to get to that level? Um, I, honestly, just one. Yeah. That's great news. I mean, once you're produced, you know, it kind of lays like that, you know, that good that good housekeeping. That's an old term, but you know, <laughs> the good housekeeping seal of approval. You know, um, that's true. and. That's true. Um, and uh, I'm not saying, you know, don't write spec scripts any, 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 anymore. Um, I still, I still, I still do. But it's, it's so, I, you know, as you know, writing is a, can be a painful business. There's a, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, rejection. Yeah. And, um, and, and, Everyone hurts just as much as the first one and the last one. And even now, you know, I'm told, you know, I'm, I mean, even, you know, I'm, you know, I'm told, you know, sorry, this is a, this is a pass, but right. um, it's happened. a little, it's a little, little less painful mm -hmm. when right. you're right. getting a pass on something that you did a two page synopsis, as opposed right. to spending weeks writing a full script and then it's a pass. Yeah. So um, that's the that's the great thing I think about just um, having the credits and producers knowing that if they like your concept, then you know they uh, they trust you to uh, to turn out the full script. And that's great. That's great. Now uh, you mentioned earlier something about a hundred page script. Is that like the typical number of pages producers want, or is it less or more? Um, I've heard any, I've heard everything from 100, 102, 105. I wouldn't go above 105. Um, I know they, it's usually a little bit longer than what they shoot because they want to have the freedom to, you know, to cut scenes just to make sure. Mm -hmm. The first, the first movie I, I wrote the attract. I'm, or that, I'm, I'm sorry. That was was produced. Um, the attraction test. They actually called me to expand scenes because mm. the oh. producer and the director, I guess, did a read, and they said it was timing short, about ten minutes short. Oh. So um, I had to um, I had to expand scenes. So, uh, but other than that, I found that they wanted about, I don't know, about 105 pages. And then I see, you know, when I watch the movie, I see where they, where they made the cuts. It's funny because uh, a lot of the writers I've interviewed have said, yeah, a hundred, 105 pages. And you go on IMDb and almost all these Christmas movies are like 88 minutes. So obviously, <laughs> obvi obviously they cut, but yeah, I guess they want yeah. to start start with a big number so they can cut. But um, okay, so what is your favorite script that you've written, and why? Um, I would say the first one because a it's with my first script that was produced the the attraction test that came out in 2022. But also, I think it's a good lesson on sticking to your to your guns, because, again, my original concept was about this college professor who develops a study at, uh, to match people according to their physical signs of attraction to each other. And the producer said, oh, that's too intellectual. No, it's just no. You have to dumb it down. And so I ended up changing it. And, you know, once you lose your passion, like my passion was about the professor and about the study and about the, you know, and the, you know, them, you know, the, 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 the scientists, you know, seeing her heart rate zoom when she was, you know, around this guy. Um, so once he had me change it to this entrepreneur who invented some smart dog collar, I lost my passion for the right, for the right. project. And you know, just coincidentally, my wife just happened to be watching a show on Netflix, which, as I said, I was like, "Gosh, I I think I wrote something like 
like that. Yeah. yeah good. And so went back to it and, um, you know, you, you know, sticking to your guns because produce, you know, it's, it's just one person's opinion and sometimes right. they're right. right, but they're not always right. And in this case, they certainly were, were, were not right. And going back to my original concept is what ended up being my first production. Excellent. Well, good for you. Good on good good on you. So, getting a movie made can be stressful. How do you maintain a work life balance? And do you have any hobbies? Yes, sports. Yeah. Um, I I just got back twenty minutes ago from a lovely run in the woods. Hmm. Um, and if and if I'm not if I'm, it's a little chilly here, but um, if I wasn't running, I would be biking. Okay. Or um, in the gym, uh, I'm on a tennis team, oh. and um, it's not just about keeping keeping fit. I, I find that um, when I'm writing a script and I have you know a story a story problem, I can go for a run, and I don't know if it's the increased oxygen to the brain, but right. it's amazing how many times during that run I'll solve the story I'll solve the story problem during the run. It, yeah. it's it's phenomenal yeah it's just phenomenal well i am definitely going for a run today you've inspired me, so. <laughs> i hope you have a story problem then <laughs> <laughs> i do i do i you know, oh, good. yeah no, i do good actually thing, but... uh now what advice would you give to your younger self uh my younger let's say my younger uh writer self would be to get into the uh, genre of TV movies much earlier because I spent so much time and effort, you know, back when I had a nine to five job and getting up at four in the morning. And, oh, wow. you know, I have, I, I, I have two, two children and, and they were little and I, you know, I'd get up in the, you know, at four o'clock in the morning and, wow. and write and, and, you know, just you know, trying to get a feature, you know, sold was 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 just uh, you know was just close was just close to impossible, and um, so if I had you know started this whole uh, TV you know writing the TV movies earlier, um, you know that, that that I'm not saying that I would have sold anything back when I was you know twenty five or thirty five, but I. Th- Think it would have been a much easier road and more and more encouraging road. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, but then again, you know, and that's great advice, and you know, good to give that to the young writers out there or any writer out there. Um, also, you know, life experience. You know, you bring that to the table, so that's great. It's great. So to true, wrap true. To, to wrap up, would you like to share any social media details or website links so our audience can keep track of your work or get in touch with you? Yeah, I'm um I'm mainly on Instagram, just uh just Brian Brian Ruberry, um all one word and my uh, Instagram goes to goes to Facebook. Um you know, I mean I'm on I'm on X and other things, but honestly I don't <laughs> I'm not very active on them. So um if I have a movie or if I have uh or whatever it is, I'll 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 post it on, I'll post it on Instagram, but, um, uh, yeah. And, um, that, that's a good way to reach me is to DM me on Instagram. And if people are interested in your script consulting, is that the way they get in touch with you? Yeah, they, they can, or if they have IMTV pro, they'll see my, my email on there and, um, they can email me. And I, I really enjoy, working with um with uh with uh, screenwriters especially if they're writing a a christmas film or a or a tv film because uh um you know there's i mean how many screenwriting books right are there out there there must be hundreds i bet yeah. hundreds of screenwriting books right but right. how many how many books talk about the nine act structure right uh <laughs> none um none so, um, so, so, you know, you, you can, you know, read all the books about, you know, about, 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 about screenwriting, but, but writing these Christmas movies and the nine act structures a very specific thing. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's a good way to reach me. 
Well, Brian, thank you for sharing your experience and your knowledge. You are really an inspiration. And especially, I mean, 40 years, that is, you are amazing. And now you don't even have to write the spec script. You know, you can just send a log line and a synopsis to the producer and that's it. So good on you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you again for coming on the podcast. Thanks, Karen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and now for my takeaways today, I have five. Number one, Christmas tropes. Producers and audiences want stuff that is familiar. However, Brian brought up a recent Christmas movie, Three Wise Men and a Baby, and it didn't have any of the normal tropes you find in a Christmas movie. So perhaps production companies are opening up to new and fresh ideas. Number two, getting a job just based on a synopsis. Brian mentioned even after just one sale, he can now pitch producers with just a one to two page synopsis and get jobs based off that. He's not saying don't write spec scripts. He still does, but it's a little less painful getting a pass on a synopsis versus a full script. So that's a great reason among many for getting your first sale. Number three, TV movies versus feature film. Brian mentioned in the interview that he spent 40 years, a lot of that writing feature film scripts. He did say your chances of hearing back from a producer are a lot better if you are targeting TV movie producers versus feature film producers. Number four, expand your network of producers. First, you should have a couple of Christmas scripts ready to go. Watch some Christmas movies, especially new ones, and research the companies who produce them. Use IMDb Pro. Number five, competitions. Some of them are good and some of them are money spinners. The good part is if they do offer free feedback, it might be worth it. Just be discerning. Well, that's the show. Thank you for listening. To show your support, please give us a five-star rating on Apple or wherever you get your podcasts and sign up to be notified of the launch of our membership website. This is where writers will have the opportunity to pitch producers their Christmas scripts. Just go to www.christmasmoviescreenwriter.com and look for the sign-up button in the toolbar. I'm your host, Karen McCann. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next Christmas Movie Screenwriter Podcast. <laughs>